It was almost by accident that Art Ballard became a metalsmith. We had an avocado grove and we did a little welding on the tractors and so forth. When you have farm equipment, it's always breaking. And, you know, we finally decided, heck, we need to buy a little welder and patch these things ourselves. And one thing led to the next and we started doing metal work. And I opened a small metalworking shop and, and the rest is history. While tending to his avocado farm, Art discovered welding and eventually his future business partner, Phil Hermance. My first job with Art was picking avocados when, when I was 15 years old, so uh, I've known Art for about uh, 30 years. In 91, I started here full time, and uh, shortly after that, we started our own business. They named their joint venture Art's Work Unlimited, and for the last 13 years, their ornamental metalworking shop has been creating award-winning custom metalwork. What we like to do is hand make all our pieces. We don't use castings, we don't form in wax or, or wood or anything and make a casting. We normally form it by hand. So it's all real, true, hand-wrought uh, artwork. We do a lot of, I won't say a lot, but a fair number of, of doors, which are very difficult. And we do uh, interior rails and furniture. We do a lot of custom furniture for, for designers. And we like to do the weird and unusual. Phil demonstrates. What I have here is a uh, bird that's been cut out of eighth inch sheet of aluminum. Right now I'm going to light the torch, turn the oxygen down and the acetylene up to where the, the acetylene leaves a soot. So I'm darkening the bird with the soot and then I'll come back and I'll turn the oxygen on and I'm going to start heating the bird. As I move the heat along, the uh, soot heats up at approximately, it burns off around 800 degrees. And then I'm going to take it and quench it in the water. What quenching does is it freezes that, those molecules at the point where they're at when they're heated. Now the metal is annealed. It's, met, it's much softer than it was originally. Take, taking it over to the uh, stake to begin beating the edges down. So instead of popping the middle down, what I do is I take the edges and I beat them around till the middle pops up. You'll see as it begins to raise, uh, by knocking the edges down, the center will raise. And uh, that's the process that I'm gonna do back and forth. Now it's Art's turn. I'm gonna make an aluminum leaf out of a piece of three-quarter square bar. And I'm gonna start out by drawing uh, the end down to a point and then I'm going to neck down a little area a couple inches back from the end and then I'm going to spread the head uh, to form the leaf and then I'll probably put it back in the fire for a little while and anneal the aluminum so it's soft enough to work with and then I'll draw down the stem and create a nice long taper all the way down to the leaf. And this is going to be a very crude leaf, a quick leaf, just to give you the idea how the metal can move under the right conditions and when the metal is soft. It's Art's and Phil's commitment to the artistry of their metalwork that makes them stand above the rest. We've been very fortunate to win a lot of awards over the years. You know, little by little increased our skills and our artistic endeavors and everything until we arrived at sort of where we are today. We're always learning. These days, through the power of the internet, we can type an address and almost instantly access a map to that location. But hundreds of years ago, maps were much harder to come by. Cartographers employed a long, arduous process to create the vision of geography. Today, these antique maps provide a whole new view of the world. New Florida gives us a vision of these antique